life. <laughs> Mrs. Barclay, it was a feast, especially the egg surprise. Just oh, wonderful. If you think Mother's egg surprise was wonderful, wait till you see the surprise I have for you. <laughs> That's the one I want to say. The surprise you have for her. <laughs> let, me, let me guess. I know. You're going to let me smoke an after-dinner cigar with the men folk. <laughs> <laughs> Stand back, my lovely. <laughs> Walla! Ah. Oh, it's beautiful. Well, what is it? What, what is, is it? it? It's a pool table. Believe me, the current rage in San Francisco. Sweeping the west coast like prairie fire. Introduced by the far-sighted and progressive Barclays into the big valley. Oh, well, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I'm overwhelmed. But well, what do you do with it? Brother Jared, show the lady. You just wait here. You can't go barging in here like that. Mr. Nick! Mr. Nick! Ha ha! Jock! Ha ha! Nick, me boy! Jock McClain! What are you doing here? Ha ha! Oh, look at you! Oh, look at you! Oh, well, Mother, you remember me talking about Jock McLean? Of course, Colonel Jock McLean. How nice to meet Nick's old commanding officer. Oh, how nice to meet the mother of such a broth of a boy. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> oh, let me introduce the rest of my family. This is my sister, Audra. How do you Delightful. do? Oh, my brother, Jared. Jared. How do you do? Brother Heath. Heath. Colonel. And over here, Melanie Deland. Charming. Oh, Nick, what a palace you've got here. I'm sorry to come barging in like this, ma'am, but I wanted to see the boy and what with this business and all that's on. Is this a business trip, Jack? Haven't you heard? Oh, yes, they finally located the Barclay Riverboat. The River Monarch. The River Monarch. Hey, a wee boy fished up a bit of the wreckage. That's what put us on the track. It was miles away from where they've been searching. After all these years. Well, excuse me, Jock, but uh, just what is your stake in this? Oh, oh, laddie, don't I wish I did have a stake in it. When she went down, she was carrying a million dollars worth of government gold. I've been sent down here in charge of the salvaging. Lassie. Lassie, is there something wrong? Melanie. Melanie. just too much of a good meal. Now, you better be fully recovered by Sunday. I don't think I can make it through that picnic all by myself. Good night, Nick. Thank you for a lovely evening.
Oh, baby. Baby. I had one of those dreams again. It's all right. My father. Is something wrong, baby? Father. They found the river monarch. Are you sure, Melody? An army officer came to the Barclays tonight. He's in charge of salvaging. The gold. The gold. We've got... Get hold of Peter Doolan. At once. Tell him to call a meeting of the circle. I thought it was over, too. I prayed to God it was over. For the drum will roll and bless my soul, this is the way we go. Look, am I the only one with a voice around here? What do you mean? Another day on beans and hay in the regular army, oh. In the regular army, oh. <laughs> we sang that song all the way through the wilderness campaign. Aye, the wilderness campaign. Wasn't that when you first joined the 48th? Yeah, it was, and the first time I saw you, you were sitting on a tree stump. Behind a tree stump. Hiding from the enemy. Ah, you were sitting on that tree stump, nursing a mini ball you just got in your leg, and the same time you were threatening the regimental surgeon with slaughter if he didn't fix it in time for the advance. Days of glory, eh, boy? <laughs> <laughs> now, will you all be joining old Jock in a wee toast? To the days of glory. Days to the days of glory. So you remembered, lad. <laughs> In the mess, we drank all our toast in broken glass. <laughs> Your regiment must have run up a considerable bill in glassware. Ah, uh, tis what extended the war a full year. <laughs> With that, I think I will say good night. Uh, it's about that time. I'd better be moving along, too. Oh, nonsense. You and Nick must have a thousand things to talk about. You're staying with us, of course. Oh, no, ma'am, I couldn't. Nick, you take care of it. I will. Well, gentlemen, I have to be in court early in the morning, so the table's all yours. And I have a thousand miles of range to fence. Have a good game, Jock. Good night, lad. Good night. Ah, it's good to see you, lad. Good to see you. Colonel Jock McLean, the fighting is... Jock's no more a colonel, lad. I'm sorry, Jock. It's just hard for me to realize you being anything else but a colonel. Oh, uh, well, you have me permission. But it didn't take him long, after the fighting was done, to pull me back to my regular rank. <laughs> Lieutenant Jock McLean. Oh, they should have promoted you to a general. Uh, they don't want fighting men in the army today, lad. Pink tea sippers, handy with the ladies, good at small talk in large drawing rooms. That's what rates for promotion today. Ah, uh, well. Old Jock will be retiring in six months anyway. Ah, uh, to hang with all that. Nick, lad, tell me about that lovely lassie. Is it serious with you, too? Might be if I don't watch myself. <laughs> I wish I was a lad again. Melanie Deland. Now, why would that name be so familiar to me? Her father. Her father is Cyrus Deland. He used to head up the Barclay shipping line. Aye. The army report on the ship sinking. That's where I must have run across the name. Ah, oh, think of it, laddie. A million in gold sitting on the bottom of a river. An old jock in charge of hauling it up and getting it back to the government. And when it's all done, Nick, out of sheer gratitude, if not merit, now wouldn't you think that they'd be retiring me, well, at least a captain, on a $60 a month pension instead of 40 $20 extra. It gives a man incentive.
What about another whiskey, lad? Bit of taste in my mouth. to see what a ton of gold looks like. Lead. Plain pig lead. Lead. Gentlemen, it's been a long time. Would you excuse us, please, Melanie? Sit down, sit down. Our last little gathering was the night before the River Monarchs started her ill-fated journey downstream. Now it seems the anti-ganglings of some misbegotten boy have brought her ruin to life. Isn't there anything to drink? Help yourself. You seem to be taking it cool enough, Mr. Doolan. Do you expect me to become hysterical over something that happened eight years ago? This is a hanging proposition, Mr. Doolan. Aside from the gold, 23 men went down with that ship. We knew from the beginning there would be risk. That was war. But I'm not sticking my neck in a rope for a cause that died long ago. Then I suggest we find a scapegoat. Somebody has to hang. Who shall it be? Cyrus? Anson? Anyone care to volunteer? Oh, you're out of your mind. Who's going to put a noose around his own neck? Be serious, Peter. Our lives and reputations are at stake. Of course they are. Therefore, it behooves us to find us, as a scapegoat, one man who can't possibly betray us. Any ideas? Tom Barkley. I think not. Tom Barkley was my employer, but he was also my friend. My very good friend. What are friends for, Cyrus? Particularly dead friends. Unless to make some small sacrifice for the living. This is no small sacrifice, and you know it. Afraid of smearing his good name? It would be bad enough if Tom Barkley's family wasn't here to bear the shame and the loss. If we put this on Barkley, chances are his estate will have to pay back every penny of it. And they'll lose every asset that Tom left behind. You're talking about the Barclay fortune, the Barclay good name. Well, I say hang the Barclays. I say better them than us. Gentlemen. Mr. Doolan, how do we go about it? That's the beauty and the simplicity of it. Gentlemen, you have a distinguished journalist in your midst. One, Peter Doolin. A few discreet items in the paper should help us all rest easier. Jared! Jock! What is it? 
Regis. Where'd he get this? He stops just about six inches short of the biggest liable... Short? Suit. Read on. He practically accused his father of sinking the River Monarch himself. You were supposed to keep this quiet pending investigation. There were workmen on the salvage crew that day, and heaven knows how many others who knew what we were looking for. It was bound to come out, lads. There's nothing you can do about it. It was not bound to come out, and there's plenty I can do about it. Like horsewhipping the blackguard who wrote that? Or shooting him, maybe? Now, that'd truly prove your father's innocence, wouldn't it? Look at it this way, lads. Nobody who knows your family or knew your father's gonna believe this slander. If slander it is. If! I can't allow myself the pleasure of an opinion, lad. Not if Washington asked me to investigate this case. Nicky's right. Jack said it all. Anyone who really knows us would never believe this, and the others don't matter. I smell bacon frying. Look, maybe it'll all seem different on a full stomach. What about it? Good afternoon, Mrs. Barkley. Sit down, please. No, thank you. It won't take long to say what I've come to say. You can say it just as easily from that chair. Believe me, Mrs. Barkley, I can well understand how much my article has upset you. Can you, Mr. Doolan? And don't think for a minute that it was an easy story to write. But news is news for all that, hmm? I couldn't have phrased it any better. Just as you couldn't have phrased those lies you wrote any better. Mrs. Barclay, believe me, it was certainly not my intention to accuse your husband of stealing that gold. A good friend of mine, a woman I've known many years, a woman who came to my wedding, just passed me by on the street without saying hello. Now, I'm sure that was not your intention, Mr. Doolan, but that is what happened. You're being melodramatic, Mrs. Barclay. I wager that secretly half the people in town envy a man with the initiative to steal a million dollars from the government. And not that I'm suggesting your husband did such a thing. Aren't you? Mrs. Barclay, if you've ever read the masthead of my paper, you might recall these words. The truth, no matter where it leads, no matter who it hurts. That's all I want, Mr. Doolan, the truth. All right, Mrs. Barclay, that's well taken. I can't promise you a retraction because I've printed nothing that's demonstrably a lie. But I can promise you this. From here on in, in my paper, you'll read only the truth, the provable truth. Sam, I'm not here. Leave it to me, Miss Malley. I'll wait for you. Hello, oh, Sam. This, uh, some of that new manila rope I heard about? That's right. Might be able to use some of it at the ranch. If you come for Miss Melanie, she's gone. Oh, where? Didn't say. Well, she told me to drop in if I was in town. Guess you're in hard luck. All right, what's bothering you, Sam? Nothing. Nothing's bothering you. Now, what do you mean by that? Now, you can read the paper, same as all of us. You mean that story that was in the other day? Not the other day. That one set us all to wondering. But the one today, we don't have to wonder anymore. Erna, right, what are you talking about? You haven't seen it? 
Well, it's all there. How your mother tried to bribe Mr. Doolin from telling the truth. Wanted to let them know how we feel in this town about thieves, even if they are Barclays. <laughs> Be fair, the lady pleaded, for the honor of my dead husband is at stake. <laughs> Just between ourselves, Tulip, did she really try to bribe you? Dear friends, would I malign that lovely lady? Clothe my naked villainy with odd old ends, stolen forth of holy writ? And seem a saint when most I play the devil. Richard the Third, Act One, Scene Three. Well, Doolin, you are very versed in the classics. I find a reference handy when referring to rascals, Mr. Barclay. All right, Doolin, spell it out. You're not so shy in print. Name your rascals. If the sins of the fathers are truly borne by their sons. Come on, Doolin. Don't be so touchy, dear boy. It isn't every man who can boast of a parent who got away with a cool million in government gold. Better not start preaching to me. Nick, the next time you start a public brawl because you don't like what someone says about your family, I wish you'd let me know about it. I'd like to get in on it. <laughs> hey, what's this? Jack, what's all this about? Corporal Drums just brought me some fresh orders. I'm moving into the hotel. Oh, there's plenty of room at the ranch. Nick, I've been assigned as the investigator on the River Monica Fair. And that being the case, I don't think it fitting that I should remain under your roof. Now, wait a minute, Nick. I think he's right. He is, if he figures to dig up something that involves father. What I think doesn't count, lad. I've got to make a very thorough investigation, starting with the possibility that your father might be involved. Jared, I want to see all of your father's records. They'll be at your disposal. Thank you. Corporal, let's get this stuff inside. What about this? All right, Jock, I can't account for this $70,000 deposit. But $70,000 is not a million. I know it's far from a million, but there are others. What about this, and this, and this? There's absolutely nothing... Well, you can nothing... indict our father for being a bad bookkeeper, Jock, but that has nothing... Look, to... I'm just an old soldier trying to do a job. Are you quite certain there are no other records? None that I know of. I know what this must look like to you, Jock. You see, my husband, when he died, had business interests in five different states. Factories, lands, mines, gold, silver, copper. You see... Business in those days was done during dinner, or out riding, or hunting, or at the club. A contract was drawn up on a paper bag, and between men of honor, no contract at all. A man's word was his bond. I'll accept that, but if it's possible that your husband might have earned that million dollars and not account for it in his books, it's also possible he could have stolen it and not account for it in his books. Now, now, just a minute, Jock. Now, look, there's another thing, too. The ship never sunk because of an explosion in a boiler room. There was a blasting device planted in a cargo hold. You're talking about murder. Because 23 men went down with that ship. And that, Jock, that my husband could have been no part of. Not for one million or ten million or twenty million. Well, I didn't know the man. I did. There was a young boy in my regiment. Corporal Philip Talbot. Ah, broth of a boy. Fearless. Went down fighting. 
Half a dozen bullets he took. His beautiful young wife. Ah, she mourned him something fierce. As did the two other women he married. I'm sure that all three of Talbot's wives thought they knew their husband too. I'm dreadfully sorry, Mrs. Barclay. I haven't completed my investigations yet, but it's my duty to inform you, if my findings go against you, that the government has decided to commence legal proceedings against your husband's estate for one million dollars. Good night. But according to this, there were others right here in Stockton who had access to that gold and a motive to steal it. The Knights of the Golden Circle, her Confederate sympathizers. Now, in the 18 months prior to the end of the war, there were about a half dozen small shipments of gold that were ambushed. I'm not sure it doesn't prove that they're responsible. No, no, Nick, it doesn't prove that they were responsible for stealing those shipments or the one on the River Monarch. But take a look at this. A list of names of their active members right here in Stockton. Anson Gregory, Peter Doolan, Cyrus De... DeLand. Cyrus DeLand. That's right, Nick. Now, oh, Melanie, you got better manners than to talk through a door. Thank you. Thought for a while there you were trying to avoid me. What do you want? I want to talk to your father. He's asleep. I think it's important enough to wake him up. I'll decide that after you tell me what you want. With what me. I have to say to your father has to be said in private. I am not waking him, Nick. All right, Melanie. Your father was in charge of the Barclay shipping line, and Anson Gregory was the purser of the River Monarch. That's a matter of record. Now, either of them had as much access, if not more, to the gold than my father. As much access and more motive. Motive? You mean for the money? Oh, look around, Nick. Does this look as though my father stole a million dollars? Do we live like millionaires? If he had stolen the gold, where could it be? How could he have gotten rid of it? Could have sent it to Richmond, to the Confederacy. You'll stoop to any vile slander to exonerate your own father, won't you? Not only is my father a thief, but a traitor to the Union. I think you'd better leave, Nick, now. Before you faint, like you fainted at my house when Jock McLean mentioned they had found the River Monarch. Get out of here, Nick. Not until I talk to your father. Not now. He's asleep. He's been ill. You know that, Nick. Now, Melanie, I'm going to talk to him, if not tonight. I don't know anything that could help you, and neither does he. You're lying. Will you please leave my father alone? Melanie, I'm going to find out the truth, Melanie. If not from your father, then from Anson Gregory. And if not from Anson... You won't find out anything from Anson Gregory, Peter Doolin, or anybody... I didn't even mention Peter Doolan. Get out of here! Get out! Get out, Nick! Get out! Get out! We've accomplished all we can for one evening, Anson. Good night, Cyrus. Good night. Good night. That gold, Cyrus, you've had it hidden since the end of the war. Yes, and it will remain hidden. 
Cyrus, I think the time has come for all of us to share your burden. I think not, Peter. I've borne up under it this many years. I think I can continue to do so. The pressure's greater than ever. There are many interested parties now, searching parties. I think we'd all feel more secure if we knew where you've hidden that gold. No, Peter. Just to be sure it was in a safe place. It is in a safe place. You'll just have to take my word for that. of everything, haven't I, Millie? Oh, baby, baby. Baby. We're at a crossroads, Anson. We can sit tight, live in the hope that Melanie's love for her father is greater than her love for Barclay, or we can remove temptation from her path. Remove Nick Barclay? There'd be no chance of us saying anything to a dead man. Is the lieutenant here? He's not in. Uh -huh. Jock, I want to talk to you. Uh, the young friend Nick. Come to share a glass with his old colonel. Will you excuse us? I can't leave you alone with Corporal, him in this Corporal. condition. Corporal, it's all right. Just give us a little privacy. Jock, I've got to talk to you about something now. It's very important. Nick, just give me a moment. Give me a moment. Corporal! Corporal John! Cold, wet towel. Jack, this is very important. It's important. I presume it's about the gold. The gold. The gold. Hey, that's all important, all right. Bless you, Corporal. Bless you. Jack. I think I know who stole the gold and why. The Knights of the Golden Circle. Confederate sympathizers. They were not only Confederate sympathizers, Jock. They took an active part in their cause. Did you know that Anson, Gregory, Peter, Doolin, and Cyrus DeLand were members of the Knights? I've been through their histories with a fine tooth comb, and I can't even begin to place them Jock, anywhere near Jock, the robbery. Jock, don't you think it's just a little bit strange that the purser, Anson Gregory, was the only man to survive when the ship went down. He survived with injuries. Injuries, Jock, minor injuries, injuries that could have been faked. The point is, he escaped while 23 men lost their lives. I found out something else, Nick. Your father was aboard the Monarch. When it exploded. He got off at the last fueling stop before the boat went down. Oh, now, wait a minute, Jock. That's no proof that he set that bomb. But it's an indication they had an opportunity to set it. Well, there you are, Nick. Your father against the three of them. And not any one of the three a penny richer than before the boat went down. But your father, the only man in the state who could steal a million dollars in gold and conceal it amongst his tremendous assets. All right, Jack. Now, if the gold was pirated to the Confederacy, there would be no reason for Gregory, Doolin, or Delane, or any of the others in the circle, to be any richer. Nick, there are papers in Washington to prove that that gold never got anywhere near the Confederacy. Oh, I'm sorry, Nick. I'm sorry, Nick Glad. Truly sorry. There's no need for me to tell you how much your friendship means to me, but what about a drink for old time's sake? Just one more drink with the old colonel.
this money. Make it look like a robbery. Far enough. Too far. Lieutenant McLean, I'm Cyrus DeLand. I have a story to tell you. Well, come in. You know what the doctor said. Uh, doctor be hanged. If I stay in that bed one more day, I'm going to really be sick. I'm all right. I'd like to see Mr. Nick, Silas. It's Miss Melamy, Nick. May I come in? I'd like to speak to you, Nick. I'll get some coffee. Thank you, Mrs. Barkley. If you come to see about the state of my health... Nick... And if your friends are interested... Nick, I'm here because you mean very much to me. I've hated doing what I've had to do. Avoiding you. Lying. But there seemed to be no other way. Nick, you were right. My father was involved. Your father will be cleared. You sure? I'm sure. I wanted you to hear this from me. Does Jack know? Father offered Lieutenant McLean a trade. The return of the gold in exchange for amnesty for his friends. My father's meeting with Mr. with McLean now to take him to the gold. That's that's all I came to say. Goodbye, Nick. Melanie. I would have acted the same way if my father's life was at stake. I even risked losing someone I cared very much about just for his reputation. Sorry for the delay. I'm ready to leave now, Mr. Delan. Nick, I just 
came from the telegraph office. They said that Jock sent a telegram to Washington saying that Father was guilty of sinking the River Monarch. Are you quite sure nobody else knows the gold's here? No one. Not even your daughter? Especially not my daughter. She had enough of a burden without knowing where the gold was hidden. Oh, I don't know how you managed it. One man and a million dollars worth of gold. I substituted the chests one by one in the warehouse and brought them here. Tom Barkley was my friend. He took my word that the chests loaded on the River Monarch were filled with gold. We had to blow up the ship to prevent discovery. But we never meant to kill anyone. There were lifeboats and life preservers. We never knew she'd sink so fast. Keep at it, Mr. Lyon. Keep at it. Tell me, did you really intend to send that gold to Richmond? We never intended anything else. But before we were ready, the war was over. And all these years, a million in gold, yours for the taking. And you never thought to take it. I was tempted on many occasions. Tempted and urged by the others. You've got quite a sense of honor, Mr. DeLand. Here. Let me get at that. Mr. Delan, you do have quite a sense of honor. thought it. He tried to do me and he did. Luckily, Jock was quicker on the trigger. He's not even wearing a gun, Jock. The shovel. He planned to bash out the few brains that all Jock's. What about the... What about the gold? Just a trick. There's no gold here, lad. Cold stone walls and a few rats. How did you find us, lad? The old man said that the old man had nightmares, Jack. Nightmares about, about gold and mines. So, Melanie thought it'd be a good idea if I checked out the mine. So did I. Well, it turned into a dead end. Let's get out of here, lad. 
I'll send my man down to look after the body. You ought to be more careful where you drop your cigars, Jock. I'm sorry you had to see that, lad. Jock, I... I didn't have to see that. When I heard about the telegram, I... tried to figure, oh, a dozen reasons why you'd say a thing like that about my father. And I could only come up with one. You wanted the gold for yourself. You're making it easy for me to do what I've got to do, Nick. Well, I'm only sorry that I won't be here to watch you try to talk your way out of this. Stay where you are, Nick. Don't move. I swear to you, Nick, I'll shoot. I wouldn't do it if I were you, Jock. Melanie knows where I am and why. Now, if you kill me, you won't dig yourself out of this one inch. Nick. Nick, for the sake of everything we've been through, stop! the army was his whole life. He joined when he was 16, gave it 30 years of service, 30 years of honorable service. I wonder if that'll account for anything at the court-martial. I don't know, Nick. Days of glory.
Here you are, sis. Oh, thank you. You shouldn't have bought it. I could have saddled him. Well, I had to saddle mine anyway. I'm going to go to town. Huh. Wouldn't ride too far in this heat, though. You'll melt. Oh, I'm just going down to the swimming hole for a swim. Well, that's a good idea. If I didn't have to go to the bank, I'd go with you. I'm glad you can. Otherwise, I'd have to take my bathing habit. <laughs> scenery around here is even lovelier than I was told. Sorry, I didn't mean to frighten you. Who are you? How did you get here? I imagine the same way you did. Rode up, dismounted, took off my clothes. This and... is private property and you're trespassing. Well, according to the map in my saddlebag, this is a community water hole open to everybody. But you had to cross Barkley Range to get to it. Really? Yes, and you'd better leave immediately. Oh? I'm Audra Barkley, and I'm ordering you to. Please. I'll need my clothes, of course. We'll get them. They're on that bush. Stop! Stay where you are. Whatever you say. Just let me think for a minute. I'll tell you what, I'll trust you. You just close your eyes and I'll get out of the water. Don't you dare! I'll get dressed first and then... Somebody's coming! Oh, they mustn't see us! I'm willing to take my chances. Please. Well, in that case... Down about a foot. Mighty low for this time of the year. All I can tell you is last year this time this whole area was fine pasture. Now look around. Not enough to feed one head, let alone a herd. Jay, sir, are you as worried as Nick and the other boys I've been talking to? Rain six weeks late. Hot weather instead of cold. I tell you it's the start of a bad drought. Just like the kind that ruined my place in Texas. Jared? What's wrong? Trout scare's brought on a panic. Run on the bank this morning, cleaned it down to the last penny. It's closed its doors. All the cash I had was in that bank. All the cash anybody had was in that bank.
turn? Yes, please. Well, we're more fortunate, Scott. The bank closing hurt us pretty bad, but we should be able to stay on our feet. All of our bills are paid, and most of our enterprises are solved. Audra! I'm afraid the rest of the ranchers around here are in debt up to their ears. Excuse me, Jared. Oh! Mr. Breckenridge, I would like you to meet my daughter. Audra, this is Scott Breckenridge. At your service, Miss Audra. Uh, Audra. I think Mr. Breckenridge and I have met before. Yes, I have the same feeling. Uh, where was it? Uh, let me see. I remember Paris. At the Duc d'Orléans annual masquerade ball, you went as a water nymph. No? Well, uh, London then. The Savoy? You were dining with Count, uh... uh... Scott, I'm afraid you have Audra mixed up with somebody else. Counts in the continent are still just a little bit out of her line. Well, that's their great misfortune. Oh, speaking of misfortunes, did you hear about the bank failure? How awful. Indeed it is. I'm sure under the circumstances, the family has a lot to talk about, Mrs. Barkley. I won't intrude any further. You're not intruding at all. Of course you're not, Scott. I'm only sorry you made the trip from San Francisco for nothing. Not necessarily for nothing. There's a lot of money to be made in bad times as well as good. If your offer to show me around still holds, I'd like to stay in town for a while. It certainly does. Why don't you meet me here for breakfast in the morning? We'll get an early start. I'll be here. Thank you for your hospitality, Mrs. Barkley. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. A pleasure meeting you, Miss Audra. I hope we uh, bump into each other again sometime. I'll see you to the door. Fine, Scott Breckenridge. Is he really as successful and brilliant as they say? Well, they don't call him the Midas man for nothing. Everything he touches turns to gold. The new feed we've been hearing about? Uh, Timothy and Alfalfa. Best quality I've seen. Had stores longer than the other two. I was gonna try some till yesterday. Me too. Now I haven't even got the price of a month's ordinary feed. Well, the bank's closing didn't do any of us any good. We just talked to Fred Jefferson at the bank. He don't know when the bank is gonna reopen. If we could get loans on our herds, we figured it might tide us over. We can't keep going without supplies, Nick. That's why we come to you, Barclays. Well, we got some extra supplies, but not enough for all you boys. That ain't what we mean, Nick. We ain't asking for a handout. We was hoping maybe you'd make us a loan. Enough to get us through till the herds are sold. Don't like asking, but there's nobody else. If you Barclays don't help us, a lot of us is gonna have to sell to speculators. We'll lose everything. I wish we could help, but uh, right now, all the cash we got on hand is just enough for payroll and expenses. It's gonna have to stay that way until we sell our own herd. Is that all? That's all. But what about your mills and the foundry and, and the mines? Oh, wait a minute. Not cash, Jason. But you can raise cash on them, can't you? If the bank were still operating, yes. All right, Nick. Then tell us, where do we get the money? I'm sorry. I don't know. Well, perhaps I do. Morning, Nick. Morning, Scott. He? Scott. Boys, this is Scott Breckenridge. Scott, these are our neighbors. Now, this is Titus McKelvey. Mr. McKelvey. Morning. Jace Holman. Mr. Holman. And Ed Mead. Mr. Mead. Pleasure, gentlemen. As I was saying, I have money, and I'll be happy to advance you loans in any amounts you may need. You mean on our herds? I don't know anything about cattle, Mr. Holman, on your land. What kind of terms, Mr. Breckenridge? When is the cattle market open? 90 days. All right, uh, 90 days at 
That's kind of high interest, isn't it, Scott? It's twice what the bank charges. Speculators will ask higher. And they're your only alternative, gentlemen. You're right there. I've heard that Stockton cattle are the finest in the valley. Their sales should cover the loans easily. With the drought getting worse, I wouldn't count on cattle for paying off any loans. You know, you could lose a whole herd. Remember what happened the last drought? Nick's right, boys. Scott here is a personal friend, but I'd advise against taking him or anyone else up on short-term loans under these conditions. You ain't hurting for money. Uh, Jared's got a good point, gentlemen. There's a lot of risk involved in short-term loans for everyone. I guess it's pretty much of a gamble either way, Mr. Breckenridge. If you're willing to risk it, so are we. You've got a deal. Good. Jared, would you draw up the necessary papers? Boys, I'm advising you against these loans. But if that's what you want, I'll draw up the papers. Your advice ain't going to feed our cattle. Thank you, Mr. Breckenridge. You got more faith in us than our neighbors. Well, I'm glad you think so, Mr. Holman. Good day, gentlemen. All right, boys, let's get back to work. No, no. I was just thinking about Scott Breckenridge, wondering why he made all those loans so quickly. You know, there really isn't that much in it for him. Are you afraid he's speculating, hoping the ranchers won't be able to pay? Well, I don't like to admit it, but he could be. He's completely unpredictable at times. How can you say that when he's risking so much money just to help them? Why, if it hadn't been for him, they wouldn't even be able to buy their supplies. Audra, believe me, he's no philanthropist. He wouldn't risk anything just to help somebody. Why, you probably just don't understand him. I know him pretty well. I used to handle some of his legal affairs for him. Well, I think you're wrong. I think he's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. <laughs> Most women do. What do you mean? He means he's like me, irresistible. And he's got his choice of the most sophisticated ladies from San Francisco to Paris. So I'm afraid he wouldn't be interested in you, little sister. Well, if those women are so fascinating, why isn't he married by now? One woman is rarely enough for a man like Scott Breckenridge. The need for conquest is too strong. They simply aren't the marrying kind. Aren't they? Boy, howdy. Where are we going like that in broad daylight? Into town. In that dress? You're going to get a terrible sunburn. This dress is the latest thing in Goaty's ladies' book. Well, either the sun's mighty weak back east or those Goaty ladies have hides like mules. Do me a favor. Tell Mother I'll be home later on this afternoon. I'll tell her. Bye-bye. You better get some cocoa butter while you're in town. You're sure going to need it. light or a heavy handle for a quick draw. Good morning, Miss Hawn. Good morning, Mr. Breckenridge. What a pleasant surprise. I was just about to say the same thing. Thank you. Isn't that one of Godie's latest frocks? 
Why, yes, it's, it's called a morning dress. Yes, all the ladies in New York are wearing them now. Really? Oh, they're considered to be the height of sophistication. That one makes you look at least 16. I'm well over 16. Well over 16, you don't say. You're impossible. <laughs> so I've been told. Well, what brings you to town on such a hot day? I have an appointment at the dressmaker's. Well, may I have the pleasure of accompanying you? Well, thank you, but you needn't bother. Oh, nonsense. It's no bother at all. Well, I've seen you this far. I'll see you to the door. It seems that your dressmaker's forgotten about your appointment. Oh, well, she, she probably just stepped out for a minute. I'll just wait. I'll wait with you. No. It really isn't necessary. I, I'm sure she won't be long. Why, I wouldn't dream of allowing a lady to wait alone. It's awfully warm, isn't it? Indeed it is. Maybe my appointment's for next week. I, I mean, I might have gotten them mixed up. Really? Yes, I... I don't think I'll wait any longer. A wise decision. And as much as your plans have changed, Miss Audra, perhaps you'd like to have an ice with me at the hotel. Why, thank you, Mr. Breckenridge. I... You don't think I had an appointment at all, do you? Who's you think I came all the way into town just to see you? Yes, I do. And I'm glad you did. I'm glad I did, too. <laughs> <laughs> Buckley's blind or something? Didn't you see my iron stuck over there? We saw it. Well, what do you think you're doing? I got 50 head back there coming in here to drink. Well, we'll be watered out of here by the time they get here. That ain't the point. It's first come, first served at a community hall, and you know it. You agreed along with the rest. We couldn't wait, Jace. We found those cows in a dried up water hole. No telling how long they've been without water. You still got water in your high pasture? Why didn't you take them there? They're too weak. They'd never make it that far. My cows are weak, too. But I wouldn't go hogging the community hole when I had some of my own. Hogging? You want us to let these cows die, Jace? If that's what you want, say so. Let them drink. To my way of thinking, hoarding water in a drought is the same as stealing. Think of it, I don't feel too much like playing either. And when I got to Paris, I discovered he taught me Italian. <laughs> oh, God. Hello, everybody. Sorry I'm late, Mother. We were beginning to worry. Worry? We are about to send out a posse. My apologies, Mrs. Barkley. Audra and I met accidentally in town, and I was so engrossed in her company that I completely lost track of the time. We were only concerned about her driving in the dark. Thank you for seeing her home. Not at all. Well, as long as you're here, Scott, why don't you stay for dinner? Oh, yes, Scott, please stay. Well, uh, if I wouldn't be intruding, I... Not at all. We'd love to have you. I'll tell Silas to sit another place. Sit down, Scott. 
Can I get you brandy? Fine. The mother? No, thank you. Well, what's the latest on the drought situation? Getting much worse. All the little water holes around are pretty well dried up, and the ranchers are using one community water hole. And that's not working out too good either. Nick and I had a little run-in with Jace Holman today. Well, it takes courage to handle adversity. It's a quality I greatly admire, but often find most lacking when the chips are down. Well, you must figure the ranchers have courage, or else you wouldn't have made the loan. On the contrary, Heath, I think they don't. When the going gets rough, I think they'll fall apart. And then you'd acquire a great deal of valuable land without having to bargain for it at auction, right? Exactly. Well, I disagree with you, Scott. I think the ranchers around here had more than enough courage. Then I get my money back with interest. Either way, I can't lose. That's a pretty cold-blooded attitude, isn't it? A cold-blooded attitude is a necessary part of my Midas touch. As I remember, Midas came to regret his golden touch. He killed everyone he loved. I shall try to profit by his mistakes, Mrs. Barclay. Dinner is ready, Mother. I hope you like chicken creole, Scott. Silas prides himself on it. As of the moment, it's my favorite dish. Nick. Tour, because I plan to drink this whole thing dry. You don't, I guarantee to finish the job. What's the matter? Sulfur. Oh, well, now that's all we need. We bring sulfur up through. Sounded like dynamite. Yeah, right over that rise. Set that blast. Any objections? What's the idea? We're dynamiting for rain. You're what? Dynamiting for rain. Worked in Nebraska, dynamited three days, and broke the drought complete. Uh, probably was due to break anyhow. No, sir. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. Mm -hmm. Jackrabbits are green. Well, all right. Don't believe me. But it's my <laughs> land, and we'll do what we want. There's only one big water hole left, and it's getting lower. We got to do something. Well, the stream that feeds that big water hole runs right under this ground here. You keep blasting, you're gonna foul it for sure. It's already beginning to go yellow. What are you talking about? We were just there. Sulfur's leaking into the south end. We better set these over in the West Canyon. Be better if you stop blasting altogether. You Barclays wouldn't lend us money, and I don't notice you sharing water, so don't give us any advice! <laughs>
Say, young lady, wasn't that your horse I saw tied up in town today? Well, it may well have been. Why? Well, usually when you're in town, I can expect a visit. And then the extreme pleasure of taking the prettiest young lady in Stockton to lunch. Well, I appreciate the compliment, but I couldn't have had lunch with you today anyway. I gathered as much. You've, uh, you've been seeing quite a bit of Scott lately, haven't you? Yes, I have. And I'll never be able to thank you enough. Thank me? For what? Well, it's because of you that he came to Stockton. <laughs> well, not exactly because of me. He never was one to miss a business opportunity, you know. Well, anyway, you had something to do with it, and, and I can't thank you enough. Not nearly enough. Well, I wish I could honestly say you're welcome. Audra, how much do you think you know about Scott? Well, to begin with, he was born in New York City in 1841 of English parents. Now, that isn't what I mean. <laughs> I know it isn't. Why do you ask, Jared? Well, I just don't want to see you get hurt, honey. I know Scott well enough to feel positive he'd never hurt me. You're sure? I'm sure. But thanks for worrying, big brother. You know what you are tonight? An enchantress. A ravishingly beautiful enchantress. Which one? Mm -hmm. Cleopatra, Delilah, Julia. Take your pick. Cleopatra. I would have thought you'd say Julia. See how little you know about the real me? Oh, what a heavenly night. The stars seem almost close enough to touch. In Tahiti, the stars are so bright, their reflections light up the lagoons at night. They look like silver mirrors. Oh, it must be exciting to see all those faraway places, meet all kinds of people. Exciting, yes. But all kinds of people are usually strangers, especially when you have to match wits with them. Strangers can become friends, can't they? Well, friends know your weaknesses as well as your strengths. And a successful businessman can't afford to let anyone get that close. Well, if there's nobody who's close, then there's nobody who cares. Nobody to share with. <laughs> On the contrary, there are many always willing to share. But as for caring, the Tahitians have a saying translated to go something like, he who climbs up the mountain looks upon the lagoon alone. Is that the way you want it, Scott? Looking down on the lagoon alone? Up until these past few weeks, I thought so. These past few weeks? That's why I took the liberty of sending for these. You mentioned you like pearls. I've never seen anything so exquisite. Wait, I really shouldn't take them. Surely an enchantress isn't bound by rules of propriety. Audra, do you want them? Of course I do. Then take them. How do they look? You look beautiful. It's been a wonderful evening. For me too, Audra. I'll see you tomorrow. Of course. I'll come by in the morning. We'll go riding. And I'll pack a lunch. I know just the spot for it. Till tomorrow. Good night. Audra? 
Did you have a nice time? Oh, marvelous. We danced and danced and danced and danced. Look what Scott gave me. He sent to San Francisco for them. Well, they're lovely. Is it some special occasion? I just said I like pearls, that's all. Well, I'm sure Scott only meant to be thoughtful, no, but... No, Mother, I know what you're going to say. That I shouldn't accept expensive gifts. Unless they're from my fiancé. Oh, I know he's going to ask me, Mother. I just know it. Mrs. Barkley. Mr. Breckenridge. I received your note. This is an unexpected pleasure. Thank you. May I offer you some refreshment? No, thank you. Is there some place we could talk privately? Uh, over here? I'm afraid this lobby doesn't offer the seclusion of, uh, say, the Grand Hotel in Paris. <laughs> no, the scandal. I'll wager that half the intrigues in Europe start at the Grand. Especially the romantic ones. Yes. At that little table on the balcony, just to the left of the main staircase. Oh, yes, that French count used to meet his little ballerina there. The, the one his father tried to buy off. Now, what was her name? Minette Duclair. <laughs> Lots of men used to meet her there. Oh? Oh, she must have been more experienced than she appeared. Well, theatrical people generally are. Mm, not only theatrical people. I found in most walks of life, appearances can be deceiving. Audra's a very good example of that. Audra, deceiving. I don't think those two words go together. To many, she may seem completely mature. In many ways, she is. But with men of the world, men like yourself, she's young and totally inexperienced. She has all the allure of a woman, Mrs. Barclay. I hadn't noticed that she was at any disadvantage. She's out of her depth in an intrigue, Mr. Breckenridge. She could be badly hurt. Is that what you think I'm offering her, an intrigue? Men like yourself seldom offer anything else. Generalities can often be as deceiving as appearances, Mrs. Barkley. Anyway, whatever I'm offering, I think that order should have the right to choose her herself. In most cases, I would agree. But in this instance, I am concerned because the wrong choice could be so very wrong. You don't have very much faith in your daughter, do you? Are you concerned for her virtue or the Barclay name? Oh, no. The Barclay name has withstood many severe blows in the past and will withstand many more in the future. Does that answer your question? Audra and I are spending the afternoon together. I know. I never take unfair advantage of an inexperienced opponent, Mrs. Barclay. At least, not unless they're fully aware of all details. I hope I can count on that. Good day, Mr. Breckenridge. Good day, Mrs. Barkley. Mm -hmm. the last. Hmm. Half for you and half for me. What was that? Oh, that's the ranchers. They're dynamiting for rain. I'm sorry. Much more, Scott. So much more that when I leave here, I want to take you with me. I want to show you all the exciting places in the world. London, Paris, Rome. Make myself the envy of every man on two continents. Oh, yes, Scott. Yes, I'll go anywhere with you. Anywhere in the world. Oh, I knew you'd love me. I knew you'd ask me to marry you. Audra. 
didn't ask you to marry me. Oh, I know, not, not in so many words. I but... thought we understood each other, especially after last night. That we were two of a kind, not tied down by other people's rules. But you just said... That... What I just said was an invitation to a wonderful, exciting, romantic interlude with no strings attached to either of us. Strings choke love, Audrey. They, they destroy it, turn it into hate. No. No, I want strings. I want to be tied to you for the rest of my life. I love you. I love you. But love is a thing of wings and wind. Clip those wings and... Well, I won't do it. I can't do it. What you're saying is that you want me for your mistress, but not for your wife. What I'm saying is that I want you. That's the important thing. No! You don't want me. Not really. Not enough. Order. Order. You treated me like I was a chick. Order. I never want to see you again. Never! drought like this since I've been in the valley. It's bound to break soon. All we need is a little time. I'm standing firm, gentlemen. I want the full amount with interest, and I want it one week from today when it's due. We can't pay by then, and you know it. Then I'll expect you to vacate the land. Suppose we refuse to get off. You do that, Mr. Holman. And this range will be swarming with state deputies within 48 hours. I believe that's all, gentlemen. That is till next week. You can't steal our land just because we signed a piece of paper. Well, you ask Jared about that piece of paper. He wrote it. He's within his rights. Well, you Barclay's got influence. Can't you force him to give us some time? Not without breaking the law. Then you're saying he's right. You're on his side. Legally, yes. Jared, how much do you figure on making on this spindle? I don't think you mean that, Jace. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. But if it turns out it is true, you'll regret the day you ever saw this valley, Jared. Scott, I'm going to ask you one more time. Extend those loans for 30 days at the same rate of interest. I like it the way it is. All right, then. Suppose I underwrite those loans with mortgages on the Barclay Mills. <laughs> That's a gallant gesture, Jaron. Too bad your neighbors aren't worth it. They may be frightened men, but they're honest. And they're my friends. They have a very interesting way of showing it. And even if we could break those contracts, it would take months. All assets would be tied up and none of the ranchers would be able to hold out. He's not a financier, he's a vulture. I'm afraid you're right, Nick. While everybody else is praying for rain, he's hoping the drought will last. But just until every rancher who owes him money is beaten into the ground. Yeah. And when I think I'm the one who suggested he come here in the first place. Heard Jace Holman point that up in the saloon today. Jared, is there anything we've overlooked that would change Scott's mind? I doubt it. I've already taken the liberty of offering him mortgages on our mills. He refused. Apparently, he doesn't realize exactly how much losing their land means to the ranchers. Or worse, he knows and just couldn't care less. Excuse me. Where are you going? There's something I have to do before dinner. What Scott's up to is clear enough. As soon as the drought's over, property values rise, and he can ask any price he wants. I heard there's talk in Sacramento of finding a way to bring year-round water into the valley. Well, if they do, they'll have the support of every rancher in this valley, I promise you that. If there are any left around to give support.
is it? Audra Barclay. Audra? May I come in? Well, I rather thought a bachelor's hotel room was a little out of bounds by your rules. Please, it, it's important. I know you're surprised to see me. After our last meeting, it is a little unexpected. I didn't want to come. I had to. Had to? Why? Because I have to make you understand how important the rancher's land is to them. Oh, it's not just property, Scott. It's their whole life. And if you take it away from them, then, then they won't have anything. Not anything. They knew that when they signed the contracts. But they were desperate then. They didn't know what else to do. Well, desperate or not, they knew the terms. And you won't change your mind about the extension? I don't consider sentiment appropriate collateral. I see. Well, then I have another offer. Oh, a mortgage? In a way. Well, Jared already made that offer. I turned him down. Flat. It's not the same as Jared's. All right, what's your offer? Myself. That's an interesting offer. Go on. If you'll extend the loans to the ranchers, I'll go away with you. I see. And I'll stay for as long as you want me. Oh, there is no limit to the sacrifices you Barclays will make for your neighbors, is there? You place a high value on yourself. That land is worth over half a million dollars. What makes you think you're worth that? You and the things you said to me. Audrey, you have a shrewd marketing sense. Then you accept. A half a million dollars is a lot of money. I'll have to think about it. I'll let you know as soon as I can. You're the most despicable man I've ever known. I rather imagined you thought that. The whole bunch of them. One more. No thanks, Heath. Gentlemen. Chase, how is your wife? Fair enough. Titus, has that grandson of yours started walking yet? He sure has, Victoria. Good. Ed, I understand your mother's 70th birthday is tomorrow. I'll send her over some apple cake. I know she likes it. We didn't come here for apple cake. Or nice talk either. What did you come here for, Jace? We figured you Barclays are in cahoots with Breckenridge on this loan deal. That's why you brought him here. Jace, you're wrong and you know it. We don't know nothing of the kind. What are you driving at, Jace? If you're not all in the same boat... What was your sister doing with Breckenridge at his hotel? What are you... Keith, let him finish. All right. We come for some straight answers. If we don't get them... We'll dynamite till every water hole in this area is fouled and there ain't a Barkley steer left alive. That won't be necessary. What do you want here? When I last saw these gentlemen, I assumed that they were on their way here, so I thought I would come along and clear the air. 
I took Jared up on an old offer to come to Stockton as a cover-up for my real reason for being here, which was to take advantage of the crash that I knew was inevitable. The Barclays had nothing to do with my succeeding. They're on your side. It sure looked that way at the hotel tonight. Both Jared and Audra made offers for bargains of extensions of your loans. Audra's offer was by far the more interesting. That's why she was at my hotel. Audra has offered to go away with me, anywhere, for as long as I want her. Why she thinks you gentlemen are worth it, I will never know, but your loans are extended. I'm accepting her offer. Audra? She's not going anywhere. You may leave now, Mr. Breckenridge. Well, Audra, did you come to the hotel to play games? Or did you mean it? I meant it. Audra, you don't know what you're doing. Yes, I do. And not you or anybody else in this family can say or do anything to stop me. I'll pack my things. Speaking for myself, I don't think I accept your extension, Mr. Breckenridge. The extensions are granted whether you accept them or not, gentlemen. On the other hand, Mrs. Barclay, I have no intention of letting your daughter go through with her promise to me. I once said that I admire courage. I had never thought to find so much in one so young and so beautiful. Will you tell her goodbye for me? I will. And thank you. I can find my way out. Mother? Do you know what... needs it. Thunder and lightning! <laughs> the drought's over! Of course, if it hadn't been for the drought, he never would have come to Stockton. So much courage in one so young and so beautiful. That's what he said about you just before he left. <laughs>